place of fashion, custodian of culture and a thousand years of history, but above all, capital of love. I can remember just such a day as this, with the sun shining, the sky blue, and on the air, the sound and all, the smell of love. If art is a lie that shows us the truth, history only a fable that has been agreed, what then is love, if not the only miracle man can perform? Must you go? And especially the Frenchman, eh? I have to, my little one. I have to. Have you put your undervest on? Yes. And your pills, you have them? Not duty, General. You stand very high with all my girls. When can we hope to see you again? Hmm? Oh, when indeed. For even as the General was bracing himself for further action, on another front, our British allies were about to withdraw. God, I'll miss the bloody bed. I'll get my skates on. <sighs> Sorry. This war, it's going to kill our business. Yes. Well, you know what the British say in a situation like that, don't you? What do the British say? Keep in touch. Yes, I think that's what it is. Sure, I heard somebody say so. Keep in touch. You British are all right. What happens to us when the Bosch gets here? Oh, not to worry. Just hang on, give us a day or two, then we shall be back. And uh, in the meantime, uh, yes, keep in touch. At this moment in history, with the British and French reluctantly about to part company, yeah, here goes. and a prostrate capital prepared to receive the master race, the position of America was, as usual, one to be envied. Listen, ladies, in this war, we Americans are neutral. We don't give a damn who kills Hitler. Mm -hmm. Excusez-moi, mon général. Uh, Pouvez-vous me dire le plus quick route for Dunkirk? You will easily recognize it. It is right next to the sea. What else? Hold on. Route sod. I could have told him that. Hi, Major. Hi. Any room on the Rumpel seat? Where to? American Embassy? <laughs> Sorry, old chap, no. It's the wrong direction. Anyway, I'm a bit pushed this morning. Off to the seaside if I can get this bloody thing started. <laughs> Not time, pal. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. For Madame Grenier, a good night's work had ended. Alas, for France and many of Madame's patrons, a bad day's work was about to begin. In deceiving his wife, the old general had indeed tempted Providence. By postponing his return to her cold embrace, he was to feel the even colder breath of destiny. Was it an imperative of history or a mere quack of fate that, at this moment, brought a truckload of Germans onto the scene? Who can say? Enough that the Germans remembered their Führer's orders. They were resolved to be lovable and determined to help. Hey, General, do you need help? I have received a puncture. Come, come! Oh, 
tolerances am in contact to alpha Can't you tell them that it was all a mistake? Do not despair, General Latour. Your passing will do more for France than a lifetime of inactive service. No. You are about to become the first great hero of the French resistance. Hey! Vive la France! Ha! So, history is written. Do you like Paris, Robbie? Well, I'm glad to be home, sir. Yes, yes, of course, but do you like it? Well, it's very French, apart from a few German tourists. Ever done any parachute jumping? No, sir, no. I know head for heights. Well, we wouldn't drop you on your head. No, sir. Now, tell us more about this Madame Grenier. Madame Grenier? Well, she certainly put up a black with old Adolf. She had indeed, but thanks to General von Grotjan, Madame Grenier was for the moment safe. Despite the doubts of the Gestapo, her license was renewed. And in no time at all, she and her girls were settling down to life under the Germans. Yeah, I know where it is. And at once. I know that. I don't need a Frenchman to teach me our anthem. No. We know that this is an American plot. The grave events of that night at Madame Grenier were to have unexpected and widespread repercussions. The British people need ships. From America, they will get ships. They need planes. From America, they will get planes. From America, they will get tanks and guns and ammunition and supplies of all kinds. Oh boy, Mr. Prayers. The president uh, omitted only one thing. The British, as well as France, had need also of Madame Grenier. What troubles you, my child? History was on the march again. The stars in their courses and the fate of nations to be decided. There it is again. Water. I am not liking it, mein Führer. You must keep away from water. You will only get out of your debt. Even as Britain was being spared invasion, Colonel Grenier's novel recruits <coughs> were being spared nothing in training. Stand up, Claudine. Do it again. Do it again. They were to be fighting fit, and the house fitted out for fighting. Their weapons were to be the most unconventional, their methods quite unspeakable. By June of 1941, the Grenier girls were ready for deployment against an enemy whose eyes and ambitions had turned in quite another direction. How the bodies were disposed of remains one of the best kept secrets of the war. So well kept that I myself cannot be sure. Nevertheless, our resourceful enemy was resolved to find out.
Poor Marie Claude, so innocent, as innocent and unprepared as the United States for the treachery of Japan. On December the 7th, 1941, America was stabbed in the back. Okay, drop him. Get a doctor! Moscow was saved. Thanks to Madame Grenier, the help summoned was never to arrive. It had gone with the wind. By June 1944, the forces of resistance in France were on the move. Show, girl. Spot on. Now get out of here as quick as you like. Move the rest around to me. Right? Go on. Out you go. Girls, come quickly. Take that with you. Okay. Come along, girls. Ah. Uh, what do they know of history? Who only history know? And as we said at the beginning, what is history if not a fable that has been agreed upon? 